season replays, the fantasy drafts, ultimate creative leagues, and what if the tournament? It's Coffee Cup Games with the coach DKM. Hey, 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 this is Coach DK. Welcome to Coffee Cup Games. Hope you guys are having a good one. We are going to continue our series with what I'm calling the originals. It's the very first game of some big event that happened throughout Major League Baseball history, our very first episode. We did the very first Professional League Baseball game, which happened in 1871. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the very first original National League Baseball game that happened in April 22nd, 1876. And where did it happen? It happened in Philadelphia on Jefferson Street grounds. And the game was between the Boston Red Stockings, but they were more commonly known as the Boston Red Caps in 1876, and the Philadelphia Athletes, who eventually became known as the Philadelphia Athletics. The game happened on April 22nd at Jefferson Street grounds in front of 3,000 fans. Boston ended up winning this one 6-5, to five, and what stood out was a lot of action, a lot of activity that happened, particularly at the end of the game, as well as a lot of poor defensive plays by Philadelphia. We will be managing the Boston Red Caps, or Red Stockings, in today's matchup. The Boston Red Stockings went 39-31, and 31, which is a good winning record, but unfortunately it was only good enough for fourth place out of the eight team National League. They had two big stars, future Hall of Famers, Jim O'Rourke and George Wright. They were managed by George Wright's brother, Harry Wright. So here's the starting lineup for Boston. George Wright, the shortstop, will be leading off. Leonard, the second baseman, will be batting second. Jim O'Rourke will be playing center. He'll be batting third. In the cleanup spot will be the first baseman, Murnane. Schaefer, the third baseman, will be batting fifth. McKinley, the catcher, will be batting sixth. Batting seventh will be Manning in right field. And Parks, the left fielder, will be batting eighth. And on the mound will be Joe Borden. For Philadelphia, they ended up going 14 and 45. They were the second worst team in the National League in 1876. So here is their lineup, though they do have three players who tend to be pretty darn good. That was Ezra Sutton, uh, Levi Meyerly, and George Hall. So here's the lineup. Force, the shortstop, will be leading off. Egler will be batting second. He is the center fielder. Fistler, the first baseman, will be batting third. Meyerly will be playing second today, and he is going to be batting fourth. Sutton, the third baseman, will be batting fifth. Kuhn, the catcher, batting sixth. Hall will be playing left field, and he will be batting seventh. And Fowser, the right fielder, will be batting eighth. And on the mound is Lon Knight. So let's go ahead and see if I can manage Boston to a victory like they did in 1876. Or if we will lose and be upset by the second worst team in the National League. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and let's go ahead and replay the very first original game from the National League in 1876. But you knew I was going to do it before we start the game. I'm going to ask you guys, do me a quick favor. Just would love for you guys just to like that video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment. like to see what other games you might want to see or concepts, uh, teams that you'd like to see matched up. But now let's go ahead and jump into the action of our 1876 replay of the very first original professional National League game. What a beautiful afternoon at Jefferson Street grounds in Philadelphia. Lon Knight on the mound. George Wright, the shortstop, is going to be up. George Wright hit 299 in 1876. Here's the pitch, the swing, and right off the bat, we are going to start off with a single. And of course, we're going to try to steal and see if we can get a good lead. He does not. So we're going to keep him put, and now we got Leonard, our second baseman's up here at 281. He's going to hit a ground ball to third base. That's going to be a fielder's choice, not what we want. Um, but we are still having a runner on base. We're going to try to see if we can get a steal with Leonard. He is not going to get a good, a good lead. So now Jim O'Rourke, our Hall of Fame center fielder, is up a wild pitch, or as they would like to say, just a bit outside. So Jim O'Rourke now with a runner in scoring position, one out, top of the first. Here's going to pop up to Meyerly at second base. So that'll be the second out. Now it's going to bring up Murnane, who had two home runs and 308 at-bats. Doesn't sound like a lot, but back then it probably was. 
and he likewise is going to pop out the second to Meyerly, and that's going to end the inning. Bottom of the first inning, Borden, Joe Borden on the mound, the right-hander, going against Force, and he's going to pop out the first to Murnane. That's going to be one down. Here's Egler. Egler, the center fielder, hit 299, one of the better hitters. He's going to single, so he's going to be on base, and now here comes Fissler, the first baseman, and he cannot get the lead at first for Egler, and so now he needs a 1-13. to He's going to get a 19, so that works out in our favor. That's going to be an out, and now Levi Meyerly, one of the best hitters in the 1870s, is up. And he is going to rip a single, sending Egler all the way to third. That goes in the opposite field. Now, Marley on first, Egler on third, and Ezra Sutton is up. They are going to run for second. We are going to go ahead and throw for the runner. And a wild throw as McGinley throws it all the way into the outfield. You're killing me, Smalls! When you throw the ball all the way into the outfield, that is going to allow the run to score. And now Marley is on third, Sutton still up, and he's going to hit a ground ball to Marnane. That is going to be an out. So that's going to end the first inning. Philadelphia jumps up one to nothing after a horrible throw by the catcher, and that allowed the run to score. So here's Schaefer, our third baseman. He hit 252. He's going to hit a fly ball to left field. That's going to be an out as Hull rings that one in. Here's McGinley, our catcher. He's going to hit a single, not known for his bat, but we will take advantage of it. We're going to try to see if we can get a steal here. He does not get a good lead. So now we got Manning up the right fielder. He's going to hit a ground ball to third. That's going to be a play at second. Not able to turn the double. We've been trying to steal a lot here. And now finally we get a good lead. And Manning's going to steal second. So we get a runner on second. As now Parks is coming up. He didn't only hit four times. And I believe that was probably in just the first game of the season. As he went 0 for 4, apparently, manager gave him one shot. Harry Ray gave him one shot. He didn't do well to get any hit, so he was benched the rest of the year. So now here we come to the bottom of the second. And we have Kuhn, the catcher, is up. He's going to hit a ground ball to right at short. He's got great range. That's going to be an out. One down. And now here is going to be a play. And McGinley is able to pick it up, but he could not get it. Uh -huh. McGinley is struggling behind the plate for Boston, but that puts a runner on one on first with one down. And now Fowler's going to hit a line drive. That'll be an out. And now the pitcher Knight is up. And they are going to steal. We're going to try to get the runner, and he's going to be thrown out. <laughs> That's going to end the inning. So still one nothing. Philadelphia leads. Here's now our pitcher, Borden. He needs a 1-2. to two. He's going to get a 4, but it will be good enough for a single. So he is on with no outs, a leadoff shot there. And now we are at the top of the order with our Hall of Famer, George Wright, the shortstop. He is going to hit a fly ball to center field. Not going to be able to advance the runner. And so that will be one down. And now Leonard's up. He hit a, into a fielder's choice, and he's going to do it again as that's going to be the second out. He's going to steal, and now he's going to be thrown out. Who's coaching this ball club? Third out, caught, stolen base. So we now go to the bottom of the third. They have Knight, their pitcher. He is up. He's going to hit a ground ball to short to right. That's going to be one down. And now Force is up. He popped out his last at bat. He needs a one to four. He's going to instead line out to right at second. So right with two outs here our put outs. And now Egler is going to hit a ground ball to second. Ooh. Leonard is not able to make the play. That will be an error. Egler is now on first with two outs. And now here is a passed ball. Bruh. McGinley, our catcher, with his third bad play in this game as we are only three innings in. And now Fisher with a guy on base is able to put the ball in front of the plate, and again, McGinley with an air as he throws it into the dirt. What are you doing? So that's going to be another miscue by McGinley. And they got runners on first and third with two outs. Here's Meyerly, their best hitter. He needs a one to nine. And luckily for us, it's an 18. So that will be an out to end the inning. But McGinley, our catcher, really struggling in this one. Here is O'Rourke. He is going to hit a ground ball to first, and that's going to be one down. 
And now here's Mernane. He popped up his last at bat. He's going to hit a fly ball in the center. That's going to be two down. And now we get to Schaefer, our third baseman. He flew out, and he's going to hit a fly ball into center field. Edgar's got pretty good range. Good glove for that time. He is going to be able to make a catch, and that's going to end the inning. Here is Ezra Sutton. Sutton is going to hit a ball to the catcher, and finally, McGinley makes a play. Whew, I was getting nervous about him. Coon, their catcher's up. He's going to hit a ground ball to Leonard at second. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! And that's going to be Leonard's second error, and that's going to put Coon on first. So with one down, they have a run on Coon. We are going to try to throw him out, but Kuhn just beats the throw. And that's going to put him in scoring position with one down. And now here's Hall, one of their best hitters. He needs a 1 to 15. He's going to hit a 4. That is into the gap in the right center. Kuhn's rounding third. He's going to come in to score, and Hall is going to stand up at second base with a double. That is going to give them a 2 to nil lead. And now he, Hall is going to try to throw, go to third, and he's going to steal third. So the Athletics are running all over the place here in the fourth inning, trying to take advantage of it. Now, Fowler's up the right field. He's going to pop out to right, or excuse me, to first base. That's going to be an out. And now their pitcher is up, lucky for us. And he's going to get a ground ball to Mernane, who's easy going to pick it up, tag first base to end the inning. But Philadelphia has another run as they lead now two to nothing. Here is McKinley, who's had a struggle in this game defensively, but he is one for one, and he's going to line out, and that's going to be one down. Here is Manning. Manning is going to hit a shot in the left center. That ball is going to land right in front of the wall. It's going to bounce. Eggler's there. He's going to throw it into the infield to the cutoff man as Manning easily stands up with a double. One down. Parks, unfortunately, is up. We are going to bring in a pinch hitter. We are quickly bringing in a pinch hitter with a runner in scoring position. We are going to bring in Whitney. Whitney did get a lot of at-bats. He had 139 at-bats. Most of the guys that started usually had around that 250-300 mark. So he played about half the time for Boston. So with Manning on second, here's the pitch. He's going to hit a ground ball to four. So he's got pretty good range. Whoopsie! but he does not make the play. That's going to be an error. So now Whitney on first, Manning on second. We are going to try to steal and put another runner into scoring position. And he is not able to get a good lead. Borden, the pitcher, is up. He is one for one with a single. We're going to let him swing away. He's going to hit a fly ball into right field. fowler has got a pretty decent arm, but it's behind him. And so he had to backpedal for that one, and that is going to easily score a run. As we cut the lead in half, and Whitney is still on first base, and we're at top of the order with two out. Here's Wright. Wright needs a 1 to 11. He's going to get a 16, so that's going to end the inning. And now we got to move the defense around and maybe make some subs. So we put Whitney into the left field, and then we also brought in a new catcher, Morrill. Morrill, uh... Played uh, most of the season, um, but obviously McKinley was struggling, and we did not want to continue having those woes. So we made a switch at catcher as we enter the bottom of the fifth. Here is Force, the little leadoff man for Philadelphia. They are leading 2-1. to one. Here's the pitch, and he's going to pop out the shape for a third. That is going to be an out. Here is Egler. Egler has been on base twice. You're killing me, Smalls! another air that is going to put a runner on first Egler has been on base all three times one but only has one hit here's Fistler. it's going to be a just a bit outside wild pitch and so Egler easily goes to second base and now we have Fistler up he hit 288 Unfortunately, their next two hitters are two of their best hitters. He's going to hit a ground ball to Wright. Wright is able to make it. He holds Egler at second and then fires a bullet to Murnane to get him out. Egler showing why he is one of the best defensive players in 1876. That's two down. Meyerly is up. 
He is by far their best hitter. He has a single. He has a line out. We're going to go ahead and pitch to him. He's going to get a ground ball to Leonard, who already has two errors. And Leonard cannot get there. You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious. As that is going to be a single. And so Leonard now is showing he needs to probably be replaced as his defense has been absolutely atrocious. And so Meyerly gets the single, knocks in a run, three to one, and now Sutton is up. And another wild pitch Bruh. by Borden. And that moves Miley to second, and now Sutton is going to pop out. He had two grand outs, and now a pop out. This one to George Wright, and that's going to end the inning. But Philadelphia gets back the run that they had given up in the top of the fifth, and now lead again by two with a score of 3-1. to one. Here is Leonard. Leonard, 281 hitter. He's going to lead off with a single in the opposite field over top of Fistler. Fowler gets there, gets quickly into the infield. So Leonard's going to hold up at first base. We're going to try to see if we can get a good lead. We do not. We have Jim O'Rourke up to bat, our best hitter. But he is 0 for 2 today. And he is going to hit a ground ball to Fistler, who makes a great play to first. He's going to toss it to the pitcher as he's not able to get the ball to second. So Knight covers. They get the out at first. And Leonard now is on second with Mernane up, who is also 0 for 2 today. And he's going to be over 3 as he hits one back to the pitcher. Who keeps Leonard at second, and that is going to be the second out. And now Schaefer's up. He hits a ball to George Hall in left field. Hall's making a play, and he just gets there, sliding on his knees to make the catch. So that's going to end the inning as we go into the bottom of the six. Here is the catcher, Kuhn. He's going to lead off with a fly ball to Whitney in left field. That will be one down. Here is Morrell. He is now finally in. He's going to hit a ball into first. Excuse me, Hall is going to hit the ball to first, but Marnane cannot get there in time as it just gets by, and now Hall is on first. He's going to try to steal. We're going to try to throw him out. He's going to get there easily with a very good jump, so he is on base. And now we got Bowser up in a wild pitch. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. We are going to go ahead, and we are going to intentionally walk Bowser, and we're going to bring up Lon Knight, the pitcher, who's going to hit a line ball to Leonard at second. That's going to be the second out. So with the runners on first and third, two outs. Here is the top of the order. Here's Force. We like this matchup. We are not going to throw it to Fowler. We're going to let him take that base and not take the risk of Hall trying to double steal. Force is 0 for 3, has not made it out of the infield yet with any of his hits. And again, he's going to pop out. So the intentional walk worked. As we were able to get out of that one, as it got a little bit dangerous. Here is our catcher, Morrell. He had 263. He had five doubles, two triples. We need a hit, and unfortunately, he's going to hit a pop up the fist right first. And that's going to be an out. And now here's Manny. He's one for two with a double, but he's going to hit a ground ball back to the pitcher. And that'll be the second out. And now our pitcher is up. And we're hoping that he might be able to get something. He's going to hit a ground ball to third. That's going to end the seventh inning as we are now going to move into the bottom of the seventh after the seventh inning stretch. Here is Egler. Egler's going to hit a ground ball to Leonard, who's had a rough day at second, but he's going to make a play here. That's going to be an out. Here's Whistler. He's 0 for 3. He's going to be 0 for 4 after this one. And now we bring up Levi Meyerly. He has two singles, an RBI. He is two for three. The one guy we probably don't want to face with runners on, and he's going to draw a walk. So out of everything that could have happened, we're okay with that. And now here is Sutton. Ezra Sutton, the third baseman, is going to hit a ground ball to first. Marnie's going to get it. He's going to throw it to second for the easy out at second for the fielder's choice. That's going to be the end of the seventh. We are down by two. Entering the eighth inning, Borden is up. And I believe we might be bringing in a pinch hitter. And unfortunately, we really don't have any good pitch hitter. So we're going to let Borden hit here. As he's going to hit a ball into left field, Hall is going to have to make a play. And he does another hustling play by Hall, an incredible defensive play. He has made two huge plays in the outfield. 
We are now at the top of the order at the one out. George Wright's up. He's going to hit a ground ball to Sutton. And that is going to get through the infield. As that is going to be a single for George Wright. He's going to try to get a lead. He does not. And now we got Leonard up. Leonard, one for three. He's going to hit a ground ball to Fistler. Wright was quick to get off the plate or off the base. And so he's easily going to get the second. But that will be an out. So with Jim O'Rourke up, we have a runner on second. Our best hitter, he is 0 for 3 today. He is going to be 0 for 4. As we now go to the bottom of the 8th, still trailing 3 to 1. Kuhn, the catcher's up. He needs a 1 to 10. He's going to get a 2. So this ball goes all the way. Not quite high enough to get over the fence, but it is going to hit hard off the fence. Or work catch it, throws it in quickly to the shortstop. Holding Kuhn at 2nd. Here is Hall. He is 3 Four, three with a double, and this time finally we get him out. And that's going to be out number one. Here is Fowler. He's over two with a walk. He's going to have a fly ball to center. O'Rourke with pretty good range is going to get there easily, and that's going to be the second out. And now here is Lon Knight, the pitcher. He's going to fly ball to Whitney in left field. That's going to be the third out. But we enter the top of the ninth. Murnane is up, our first baseman. Now remember, Boston won six to five. In our first original replay, we lost. So are we the bad omen here? Murnane is up. He is going to line out the third. That's going to be one down here. Schaefer, the third baseman. He's going to hit. He's a 1-14. to 14. He's going to get a 5. So this ball is hit well over center field. Hits, and he's going to have a chance to go to third. But he's going to round and go back and hold tightly there. As that's going to put... A runner in scoring position. Morrell is up. He had 263. He's only been one at bat. He popped out. He needs a one to three. He doesn't get it. He gets a 16. It's going to be good enough to send the lead runner. So we are going to score the run as the Philadelphia athletes hit the cutoff man to keep Morrell out of scoring position. Morrell is a B stealer. And so we are going to try to steal second. We do not get a good lead. So Manning's up. He is one for three with a double. And he's going to rip a single up the middle. And runners on the corner. Manning, we're going to try to see if he can steal second. He does not get a good lead. So Whitney, the left fielder, is up. He has been on base once because of an error. We need a hit. He's going to need a 1 to 15. Yeah, boy. Holy cow, that will be a huge hit by Whitney in the top of the ninth to tie the game, and the inning is not over. As we have Whitney on first, Manning on second, Borden, the pitcher's up. He is one for two. He does have a sacrifice fly. So let's see what he can do. Al Wright decides to visit the mound, and they are going to bring in George Zetlin to the mound to go against Joe Borden. Here's the pitch, the right-hander, and line out the Sutton at third. So that's going to be a second out, but the inning's not over as we get one of our best hitters, one of the legends of the 1870s. Unfortunately, this is toward the end of his career, but George Wright is up. We need him to come through in the clutch, who he's not very good at. But let's see what he can do here. He needs a 1. He gets an 11. That is still good enough for a single. So Manning, we are going to send home and try to see if he can score. And they are going to cut off the throw and allow the run to score. As we put three runs in the top of the ninth. Coming back and Leonard now is up our second baseman. He hit 281. He's going to hit a fly ball opposite field to Fowler in right field. And Fowler's going to miss it. He missed the ball. He completely dropped it. That is going to give a run, another run for us. And Leonard is on second. Wright is on third. What a horrible catch by Fowler. Is that's only their second air in the game, but that was a big one. And now O'Rourke is up. They're going to intentionally walk him, even though he's 0 for 4. He is our best hitter. He is a Hall of Famer. Makes sense. And now they're going to go against Murnane, who is 0 for 4. He had 282. He had two home runs 
34 RBIs back in 1876. Here's the pitch. He is going to line out the Sutton at third. That's going to end the inning. As we now go into the bottom of the ninth and Borden, who is extremely tired, we may need to look to see if we have another pitcher. And we decided to go with uh, Jack Manning. He was playing in right field, so we had to bring in Brown to be our catcher. We moved Morell to second. We moved then our second baseman, Leonard, into left. And then Whitney, who was in left, moved to right. So four defensive subs, just so we could bring Manning in to close this one out with a two-run lead. As our starting pitcher was extremely tired, pitched 150 pitches. Uh, usually only goes 116, so I wasn't paying attention to that one, obviously. But we knocked in four runs, top of the ninth to come back after trailing by two and now lead five to three. Manny going against the top of the order here is forced their shortstop. He is 0 for three, three pop-ups and a line out. He's gonna get a one to four chance. He hits a three. So he is quickly on base and now brings Egler up who is the tying run. He's one for four. He has been on base twice with errors by Leonard, who was the second baseman at that time, and he has scored twice. So they are going to surprisingly bring in a pinch hitter. John Ward, I believe, or Jack Ward, uh, has a, is a apparently very good pinch hitter. So they're going to try to see if he can do something. He's going to line out to Morale at second. That's going to be an out. So that did not work. Not sure if I agree with that decision, but Al Wright, the manager, for Philadelphia. I don't think there's any relation to George and Harry, but I'll write the manager for Philadelphia took a gamble. It did not pay it off, and now he has the heart of his lineup. Here's Fistler, who is 0 for 4 today. He did to get on base on air. They are going to try to steal. We're going to try to get him, and he's going to go all the way to third. Not what we want. So runner all the way on third base. He is not the run we're worried about. It is all Fistler. Fissler is going to hit a ground ball to Morale, who we just put in at second. For his defensive reasons, he is going to make a simple play at first. Let the run score. We still lead by one, and now Meyerly is up, their best player. He is two for three. He has an RBI. He's gotten on base with a walk. He is definitely somebody they want to get on base. Think that he can do it. He's going to hit a ground ball to Morale again who we put there for defensive purposes. I am a genius. Decision to make, he does it immaculately. He does it razor sharp. Genius. Because of those incredible moves going into the ninth inning, but it was all about our bats uh, in the ninth inning. The comeback after trailing three to one, we came back four runs in the ninth to win this one. Just like in 1876 in the first game, uh, Boston did end up winning with a lot of action in the final few winnings. Uh, defense ended up being the source of athletics of Philadelphia's woes. Um, though they only made two errors, one was a crucial one. And Boston, who made more errors, got the timely hits with their timely uh, batters and good defensive moves by yours truly, the manager, to win the game in the ninth. I'm gonna take full credit for this one because I'm just, you know what, I rock. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was a, another fun game to do as we're continue doing the originals. So I hope you guys are liking this series. Uh, until next time, this is Coach DK. Have a good one. Bye.